I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these Stuzor style glowing shapes with Cinema 4D and Redshift. Huge shout out to Stuzor. His work is amazing. It is always so cool and so inspiring. I really love it. I love his style. You can always tell that it's his stuff. And this is a technique that I figured out recently for a project. I was trying to get a similar effect, but Stuzor himself actually just released a tutorial explaining how he creates these using Octane. And he's been making tutorials recently. Again, he just put out a couple new ones recently. So be sure to go to his channel and check those out. Links are down in the description or up here or everywhere. Check them out, show him some support for sharing this knowledge and the cool techniques that he's doing. So before we dive into cinema and get into the technique, let's just take a quick look at a few of the images and analyze and break down what we're going for. If you do this before you watch a tutorial, especially if it's for another software or another renderer, this is going to help you pay attention to the right things and find the right parallels in your own workflow. So looking at these images, it looks like we have a cube or another shape that has this like displaced, bumpy, greebly surface and a soft, frosted, translucent texture, almost like a wax or a frosted glass or something. And down inside it, from the depth of the core, there's this glowing interior core of some kind. And that seems like the main elements that will get us this kind of a look. So let's hop into cinema and check it out, see what we can make. All right, so we're inside Cinema 4D with Redshift going. We're going to just create a regular old cube. We'll call that our outer cube. Copy and paste. Call this our inner cube. Make it a little bit smaller. We'll add a light. Awesome. And we'll create a couple of materials. The emissive core and the outer cube material. Let's add these to their respective cubes. And just quickly add some emission to our emissive core. This is going to change, but let's just get sort of an RNG color with some emission weight. And that's fine. And we'll go to our outer cube and make this a little bit transparent by upping our refraction transmission weight. Not quite all the way. And adding some roughness. Uh, next major thing we need to set up is some displacement. And in Stuzor's video, he talks about JS placement. So I'm going to show you that real quick. If you just open up JS placement, uh, you can just use it. You select one of these modes and play around with some parameters and it generates like a random displacement map type thing. You can just go through until something looks cool. Cool. 
So we'll just uh, pick one. Click save height and save it. You can see I have a few in here. And we'll drag it in. All right, let's add a displacement node really quick. Get that in there and plug that in to our output displacement. Nothing happens. That's because in Redshift, we need a tag for this displacement. So we'll right click on the outer cube, go to render tag, redshift object, under the geometry tab, check override, check tessellation, that subdivided it too much, so it's into a circle, so we'll just uh, uncheck smooth subdivision, and now it's a square again, and we'll enable tessellation. It's hard to tell if anything happened, but that's because our strength and scale are too small. So we'll just crank those up to 10, and now we see something happening. Maybe we'll go to 15, just to really see what's going on. Things are a little wiggly, so maybe we can Crank this up also. Doesn't seem to do much. There we go. Pulling down the minimum edge length allowed for our displacement to be a lot uh, sharper. It doesn't have these ramps leading up between the high areas and the low areas. So that looks pretty cool. Now it's just a matter of dialing these things in and maybe playing with some more settings in our material. Let's leave our emissive core for now and let's continue playing with this because I think we want it to be a little bit darker in certain areas and feel like it has a little bit more depth. We can do that by uh, reducing the transparency. We can also change our diffuse color. That kind of darkens up parts of it. And we can also play with our subsurface. If we add a little bit of color to our transmittance, to our transmittance. You can see that it adds a little bit more depth and it's now it feels like our sort of glass or translucent cube is really filled with that orange color. You can change the absorption scale and that makes it a lot deeper. So that's something we can mess with. And we can play with the scatter scale. That also gets some interesting results. Now, if our material is looking pretty cool, but our glow is a little bit faint, we can just go into our emissive core material and bump this up. Now we're getting some more of that glow back. And of course, we can add some classic post effects. I like to just check on photographic exposure and bloom, 
bump up the intensity a little bit, pull down the threshold. Maybe crank the overexposure, which will blow your highlights out to white. And we're looking pretty cool. One thing that I like to do in the emissive texture is to add a C4D noise shader. Make that noise. Run that through a texture node and send that into our emission color. Add our orange to the uh, color multiplier to get our yellow back. And then go into our noise where we can increase the contrast, maybe bring up the size. And you can see it adds a little bit of variation to our emissive core that I think looks pretty cool. And if you go ahead and add some animation speed to that, you kind of have this neat molten animation happening inside of your cube now. And of course, we can experiment with this even further. Now that we have the basic look, you can go ahead and try this out on a bunch of other things. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so that is how you can create a Stuzor style glowing cube using Cinema 4D and Redshift. Be sure to go check out Stuzor's own tutorial about how to do this in Octane. You might find some interesting tricks or ideas that I didn't find, or you might learn that you love to use Octane. So check it out. He's also got some great other tutorials about texturing and modeling and making his everyday renders. So give him a follow. Check that out if you haven't already. Thank you for stopping here and watching my video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.